Hello, and welcome to this lesson of Scratch on how to make a single-player soccer game. In this lesson, we are going to be learning how to control our character, make a moving automated character, and how our character can interact with a different sprite or object, such as a ball. Very first thing that we will have to do is we'll need to go ahead and click on this stage. In stage, we need to have a good backdrop. So our backdrop because I've clicked stage and selected backdrop, I am going to be clicking here. When I hover over it, it says choose backdrop from library. Let's go ahead and click that, and I'm going to want to choose a soccer background. I can either scroll through all of these, or I can go over here and go to the theme sports. I'm going to go ahead and select goal one. All right, now that I have my backdrop, I can go ahead and code my sprite. To do that, click on the sprite. And let's go ahead and drag them over here. Make sure you click on scripts to go back to the script work page here. All right, so what we're going to have to do is under events, we're going to use a win flag is clicked. And I would like us to set a start point anytime this flag is clicked. To do that, let's go ahead and click Motion. We're going to take our sprite and drag him right here. And that's going to set this Go to X, Y command. Go ahead and select the Go to X and Y command and put it under when the flag is clicked. What we have to do now is click Forever, or go to our control, excuse me. So we've clicked on Control. And we're going to use our Forever. Now, unlike last time where we actually use the events and then win and then we choose left, right, up, or down, we're actually going to go here and go if then statements. So we're going to grab these two if then statements right here. Put them in one after the other. If yours looks like this, that is incorrect. Make sure that it looks like this. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and go to sensing. This sensing command is going to be what's going to control our sprite. So I've clicked on sensing, and I'm going to choose key space pressed. I'm going to fill those into the box there. Now you should see as you drag it, you want to make sure that it's highlighting that box in white. Like that. That's going to insert it in correctly. If it's not and it's sitting like this, that is incorrect. We need it to go right here. Okay, so now let's change the space key. We're going to choose a right arrow and a left arrow. Good. Now we're going to go to motion. We're going to add our point in direction commands, one in each, and we're going to make those correlate to the proper direction. Right arrow is 90, left arrow is negative 90. Next, add the move 10 steps. Now, a quick shortcut to programming is under looks. For next costume, instead of putting those in there, we're going to just drop that right here. So as our character moves, he's going to always move like that. If you don't like him looking like he's always running, go ahead and just put that next costume in there. Like that. The other thing you can do is add the if on edge bounce command right on the end there. So now he's going to bounce. Much like in our first time experiencing Scratch, we ran into this issue where he flipped upside down. To fix that, click the I button, the information button, and under rotation style, change it to linear. Once you have that completed, we can move on to our next command. What we're going to do next is add a ball. To do that, we're going to need to add the new sprite. So under sprites here, new sprite, and we're going to select the character. Choose sprite from library. You can scroll around for any sort of soccer ball you would like. I'm just going to choose this generic ball here. Make sure that you click on it so it highlights. And once it's highlighted, go ahead and click OK. 
All right, now that our ball has been inserted into our backdrop, we can move it where it needs to go. So if we click the start, that green flag, our character will move back to normal, and now we can choose a good starting location. Let's go ahead and put the ball right in front of our character. All right, now like we did with our sprite one where we had a go to XY command, we need to do the same thing for the ball. So we go to events, when the flag is clicked, we're just going to move our ball where we want it to go like that. We'll click on the motion and we'll add that go to XY command. Awesome. So now every time this flag is clicked, the ball will always start here. Now what we need to do is add a control forever. And we're going to add another if then statement. In this if then statement, we're going to go to our sensing and we're going to use a first option here. It's going to be touching and then a blank box. Grab that and drop it into your if then statement like before. Click on the down arrow in the touching and we need to have it say sprite one. What this command is going to do is whenever the ball is touching sprite one, it's going to do a certain movement. In this case, we're just going to choose motion and we're going to add move 10 steps. We don't need to add a point in direction or any other command. Now we will also have to click on the information for the ball and change the rotation style, style to linear. Good, so now let's test that out by clicking the green flag and you can see the ball moves. Cool. Look at that. Now we could set up a scoring system if we really wanted to. But what we need to do beforehand is set up a character in here to act as a goalie. So let's go ahead and add a new sprite. So we'll choose a sprite from the library, like before. And it is up to your discretion who you would like to choose. Let's say I'm going to have a football player be our goalie. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to drag him over to the start place. But you can see that he's a little too big. So under football, we click on our football sprite, and we're going to select costume. Now that we are in our costume, we're going to get rid of the running command, or the running costume, excuse me, by clicking on football running and clicking X. So we only have him right here. Our next goal is to flip him around. We can't have him looking this way. He needs to be looking at our character. To do that, still under costume and still being selected under football standing, we're going to go over here to the upper right hand corner and we're going to choose flip left right. So he's now mirrored this way and looking this way. The other thing that we're going to want to do is change the size of our character. To do that, we have to click this guy down here called Convert to Vector Mode. Once we've converted to Vector, we click on our character like such, and we're going to just shrink him down a little bit. There we go. And now importantly, we have to click Set Costume Center. This is going to become more important as we start building our own characters and games. But we choose Set Costume Center, and then we click right on the center of our character and we're good to go for the costume. Let's go ahead and work on the scripts for the football player now or our goalie. So I've clicked on scripts. I'm going to add an events when the flag is clicked and like we've done before I'm going to drag him to the location where I want him to start and I'm going to choose motion, go to and add that XY coordinate right there. So now anytime that flag is clicked, it'll always go there. Now we need to create a command that makes him kick the ball away from the cat. Or if the ball touches him, it'll move. To do that, we go to ball. We're going to add an events. So when the flag is clicked, control, forever, and if then. Hopefully you see a repeating pattern in all of these commands. Next, we're going to add the sensing, touching, 
And instead of Sprite 1, we're going to choose our goalie character, or our football character here. Once we do that, we're going to go back to motion, and we're going to choose the glide one second. And it's always going to bring it back to here for us. So let's try that out. Go ahead and click that flag, kick it, and you can see he's pushed it back. So, oh no! There we go. And that is how we can build a quick little game to try and play soccer against a football player. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or email me at wvan at emmanuelstcharles.net. And as always, thanks for watching.